What the thorax? Are you crazy? What? I just wanted a longer car chase. It's the best part. The only thing people like more than rogues these days is Rogue on the Road to Redemption. If they're pleasant and lively, that helps. The bad guys, based on Aaron Blabley's comic book, had a great opening weekend on the big screen, burning the heist film to a younger audience. Unlike Tricks, though, this isn't solely for kids, so we can get rid of the rabbit and focus on the book's translation, cast, and some of the genre references. So, we've compiled 14 things you might have missed in the bad guys movie. Before we continue, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then click that notification option to get instant notifications on new posts. Uh, Piranha? Did we forget something? What? Now, part of the pitch for turning the bad guys into an entire film was to make it like a Tarantino film for kids. With the charming cast of people committing heists and whatnot and without all the parts that you couldn't show your kids, despite this constraint, there was still room for tributes to the legendary filmmaker. It all starts with two characters having a casual talk in a diner before getting up and executing a crime. Of course, this echoes the opening scene of Pulp Fiction, Honey Bunny and Pumpkin casually talk about robbing at the diner where they're currently sitting. Tarantino's films are known for their interestingly little talks that reveal character or narrative later on. If you want to stay out of jail, you need to go good. Steven Sorberg's Ocean series is perhaps even easier to adapt into a children's film, a recreation of a classic heist film starring a rat pack. The walking through of the plan, including doubling back for the twists and double and triple crosses, is the main takeaway from the Ocean series. Danny's squad chastised him in the first Ocean's Eleven for making the heist personal by taking from the man who is currently dating his ex. Similarly, after Diane Foxington made fun of the evil people at the news conference, Mr. Wolf is accused of making matters as he arranges the robbery to steal the dolphin statue. Chicken, you want some cake? You seem a little hangry. <laughs> Me, Mr. Wolf points out in his inaugural statement that he has been the villain in every story, from Little Red Riding Hood to the Three Little Pigs. His entire squad, it turns out, has a history portraying significant villains. The Grey, a Liam Neeson thriller, revolves around wolves. Snakes have played villains in films such as Anaconda and Snakes on a Plane. Of course, Mr. Shark made it unsafe to return to the ocean with Jaws and a hundred less successful replicas. Miss Tarantula was one of the many villains in the film film Arachnophobia, who made hunting spiders with a nail gun appear pleasant until your father took it away because he doesn't like to have fun. Even Piranhas have starred in a monster film such as James Cameron's Piranha 2, which he claims is the best film about flying piranha he ever created. I also took over the police dispatch, blurred their satellite imaging system, grounded their chopper. One of the movie's themes isn't judging people based on their appearance or preconceived notions about them. The metaphor works in the same way as becoming sinister villains in other movies does. While wolves are sometimes shown as a threat in fairy tales and films, friendly wolves began hanging out with people which led to the creation of man's best friend. And while violent, they aren't nearly as dangerous to people as they are portrayed to be. The tarantula, on the other hand, has the best case as it is less evil than a bee and doesn't pose a threat to humans. Many individuals keep them as pets. Miss Tarantula isn't a threat and you can save her hacking abilities which aren't typical among tarantulas. Go bad or go home. <laughs> Animation is a great area to hide all kinds of nods and tributes to individuals and places that have nothing to do with the story but a system populating the world. Members of the crew will have businesses named after them. Carlette's students enjoyed scribbling a 113, the animation's lab classroom number on whatever they can get their hands on. For example, the animated money, the animators went with the portrait of the president of DreamWorks, Margie Cohen. Affirming, I'm a clean, mean dolphin stealing machine. Now, the evil guy's actions occur in a no-name city in a no-name state. However, if you've ever seen the City of Angels, you'll recognize the town's appearance. From the 1970s onward, director Pierre Perry drew inspiration from Los Angeles, which served as a location for a slew of the heist and detective shows. Outside of the automobile chassis, the LA River, which is more of a canal than a river because it rarely has water, there were no specific landmarks used. Instead, the Suco and 
and design style represented Los Angeles. During the automobile pursuit, there were several nods to San Francisco, which is a tribute to the godfather of car chases, Bullet. Barreling down the stairs is also reminiscent of Michael Caine's original film, The Italian Job. Relax, these doors are complicated. Snake. Are you kidding me? We're supposed to save them, not eat them? The character's appearance, as well as the movies as a whole, have changed since the comic book's wildlife illustrations. The director wanted to give the characters a personal touch by incorporating some of his influences. He included forces from Maziki and Cowboy Bebop in addition to his native buddies. Mr. Wolf's design was influenced by Cowboy Bebop, according to the director. I'm just gonna blow it. You think I can't no, do no, this? No, no, no. When a movie goes into production, there is a wish list of persons they'd want to cast in various roles, which has a success percentage similar to the letters in Santa. For the wrong people, everyone appeared to be up for it, and they were given first picks. Mark Morn is a newcomer to the world of voice acting. He's made a name for himself as a comics comedian and the host of WTF Long Form Interview Podcast. He stated that he never watched nearly as many cartoons as he claimed, because he was astonished that many were asking, he took part. So far, his approach to voice acting has been to make it as loud as possible so that they can beg him to turn it down when they need it. Please be subtle. I'm having a baby! Is there a doctor? Crossing the Uncanny Valley is now a significant emphasis of computer animation, particularly in CGI effects. That's the part of your brain that can discern the difference between something alive and something pretending to be active but won't tell us how. This usually refers to highly complex algorithms that replicate an animal's fur or human hair. The popularity of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has reintroduced more stylized elements to computer animation. While the goal is usually to improve the animation's 3D look, the director wanted the coloring to feel more like 2D cell style animation, as if the brush strokes could be seen. This is gonna taste extra sweet, cause I know how bad you want it. You can't be genuinely super villain unless you're tipping your hands somehow. Despite operating in the city in the world's greatest detective, Joker manages to set up shop in the most prominent locations, such as a rundown amusement park. Professor Marmalade hinted at his heel turn when he put the bad guys in lovely onesies of various animals and a rainbow unicorn for Snake to soften their image. Mr. Wolf, of course, dressed up as a sheep to become a sheep in wolf's clothing, which Professor Marmalade was figuratively doing. I want you to smack it, skin it, stab it, saute, sing to it. Save it. To start the good deeds, Marmalade urges the bad guys to save a cat from a tree, a scene from the comics that happens to be the title of Blake Snyder's screenwriting guide, Save the Cat. The title alludes to the idea that the hero should save a cat in the first five to ten pages to show the readers that they're trustworthy. Well, this just got a little weird. From the late 1960s to the 1970s, gritty crime dramas had their noir-inspired style. In addition, they tended to have jazz fusion-influenced scores, which Daniel Pemberton explored, examining the work of iconic composer and producer Quincy Jones as well as Lalo Shafran, who wrote the jazz-heavy score for Steve McQueen classic Bullet. Guinea pig, huh? It's the Rolls Royce of rodents. Yeah, but it's still a rodent. With a project opening weekend gross of $25 million, industry analysts declare that the world is safe for animated family films that don't feature Spider-Man. The bad guys have come in strong, beating the Viking epic The Northman and the meta Nick Cage movie The Unbearable Weight of a Massive Talent. With a cinema score of an 85% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of 93%. For the director's first attempt at terrible, not bad. Guys. It's me! I was the construction worker! Professor Marmalade's diabolical goal is to steal the town's heart-shaped meteor and use it to power a gigantic mind-control gadget that would allow him to transform all of the guinea pigs and bad guys and unleash it into a massive mind-controlled army. While it's a new concept for the film, it does resemble Marmalade's comic book scheme from episode 4 in which he turns kittens into a zombie army of kittens. That's all we got for you today. We hope you had fun watching the video, and once you finish, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell icon to receive more notifications when we upload new videos. Thanks for taking the time to watch. It's fantastic. Wolf, you're a genius. <laughs>